Hello, my name is Archie Fernando and this is Tim O'Brien. Hello. We are both consultant urological surgeons at Guy's Hospital here in London, UK. We've been asked by the BGAUI to uh, produce a short video highlighting the key findings of our study into nephron sparing surgery across the nation. We are the lead authors on this paper, uh, but we are writing it on behalf of the British Association of Urological Surgeons. Say, Tim, you were instrumental in helping set up this study. Can you tell us how it came about? Yeah. Um, BAUS had been collecting uh, data, cancer registry, really, for about 12 years. Uh, but when I was involved in BAUS Oncology, we refocused the effort on the collection of data on the um, outcomes of major procedures, major operations. And then in 2012, the government uh, mandated each of the speciality associations of the Royal College of Surgeons of England to publicly report the outcomes of one major procedure. Uh, Baus chose nephrectomy, and this paper is the result of that first year of mandatory reporting of the outcomes of nephrectomy in England and Wales. And this sort of data set is potentially very powerful, isn't it? A lot of the literature is based on reports from surgeons who choose to report, uh, the master surgeons or the high volume centres, and it's difficult to know how representative that is of what is happening on the ground, as it were. I think that's right. Uh, this is not a report from superstar surgeons in superstar centres. Uh, this is a report from everybody. 148 surgeons contribute to their data. And I think that does lead to a report that is more generalisable and gives a better perspective on what can be achieved about the management of the small renal mass with surgery in the country. So we looked at 1,044 partial nephrectomies performed in the UK in 2012, and there was only one death in the series. Um, the incidence of serious complications, which we classified as Clavian 3 or greater, was 5%. Uh, that seems good. I agree. Um, I think one of the standout messages of this piece of work is that partial nephrectomy is performed to a high standard in the UK, and I think the surgeons are to be congratulated on that. I think it attests to the quality of their training, and I think it attests to the quality of the delivery of the procedure. One of the standout findings from this study was the incidence of benign histology in the young. So overall, 20% of tumours were benign, and that's in keeping with what we know. But if you were under the age of 40, then the incidence of benign histology was approaching 50%. Mm. And that was a standout finding for me as well. Um, I think. When, when, the lev when the rate of benign histology approaches 50%, I think it really does beg the question about whether a preoperative biopsy should be performed in every young patient prior to partial nephrectomy. Uh, I think it was definitely a standout feature for me. And we talked about some of the findings on the fringes of partial nephrectomy practice. If the tumour turned out to be PT3, the incidence of positive surgical margin was nearly 50%. Yes, I mean, surgeons argue a lot, don't they, about the significance of positive margins in partial nephrectomy, but I think what one can't argue about is the significance of PT3 tumours. Uh, they are potentially dangerous tumours, and positive margin in this setting cannot be a good thing. Um, I think it's an example of how studies of this type um, uh, open up questions as well as answer them, and I think this is one of the questions that we'll need addressing in the future years of this analysis. Mm. And we... We learned a lot about partial nephrectomy through the study, uh, but I think we also learned a lot about the process of national audit. Uh, certainly, looking at the data, there was big gaps in the recording of renal functional data, and there was no, uh, there was no complexity scoring, for example. Yes, I agree. I, I mean, there are always disappointments when you write a paper on there, and uh, certainly in this analysis, the, the limitations and disappointments really come from the lack of completeness of some of the data fields. And I think the lack of functional information and complexity information, I think, makes comparisons between surgeon A and surgeon B really impossible to do, and that's why we didn't do them in the analysis. Um, I think there are other more general um, concerns about the accuracy of surgeon-reported data. Um, we are trusting uh, surgeons to be honest when they report this information. None of the returns from any of the surgeons were formally checked 
and none of the returns from any of the centres were formally checked. And this may be something that BAUS has to address in the future to improve the power of the uh, analysis. I think we both agree that despite these limitations, this study is a great example of how surgical effort in the spirit of collaboration uh, rather than competition can lead to some very powerful messages. I agree, and I think the surgeons at Bowser should be congratulated uh, on their collaborative effort. Uh, surgeons are reared on competition, but this is uh, the product of collaboration, and I think it's to be encouraged. And I think this is a good moment to thank all the 148 surgeons who contributed data to this study, uh, without whom the study would not be possible. Um, I would echo that. Um, I think uh, it's led to an interesting data set to analyse. It certainly led to an interesting paper to write. I enjoyed writing it and uh, we hope you enjoy reading it.